You are listening to the strongest podcast in CrossFit. This is the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. All right, guys, I want to tell you a little bit about Type 1 Lifting. So Type 1 Lifting is a clothing brand that proceeds of the shirts, the hats, and everything else go to the Children's Diabetes Foundation. This whole t-shirt company started from me taking care of a five-year-old girl from the emergency department at the Children's Hospital I worked at in Atlanta for a while back. Um, I thought I needed to do a little bit more than kind of just talk about my story. So this is how I started the clothing line because I wanted to show people that even though diabetics have this really bad disease, we can still do amazing things in our life and diabetes won't stop, you know, stop us reaching our goals. So go check out type one lifting.com. And, um, you know, if you have any questions, you can always reach me out on Instagram. It's type one lifting and hope you guys enjoy the show. Hey guys, we have a new sponsor for the type one lifting podcast. The company's called Liberté lifestyle. So, Liberté is a French word meaning freedom, and the company was founded on the desire to have freedom to choose what we want to do with our lives. I actually had the owner, um, Nicole, on my podcast on episode 28, so if you want to go back and listen to her, um, she talks about how she started the company and what she wants to do in the future with the company, which is pretty cool. So uh, They actually have knee sleeves, wrist wraps, shirts, shorts. Uh, Love the knee sleeves. I have the ice cream knee sleeves, and I love them so much. They haven't The neoprene's still good. Uh, The seams haven't split compared to other uh, knee sleeves that I have had in the past. uh, And I'm planning to keep these for a very, very long time. So uh, Nicole actually gave me a promo code for you guys too. So it's all capital letters, T-Y-P-E and the number one. So it's type one. So go to LibertéLifestyle.com. Check out what they have in the store. Use the promo code type one and save some coin. Now let's go to the episode. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. The Touch and Go gang is back. On the top, you got Xander Fallick. On the bottom, you got Vic Rodriguez. And on the other bottom, you got Hannah Hardy. What's going on, guys? How's everything going? It's going great. Yeah. So Happy how, to be alive. Well, that's good. <laughs> me, too, me too. Me too. Uh, so, Xander, how, how was your – what have you been up to since, like, the past month? We haven't talked, really. Oh, we've talked, just not well, recorded. Yeah, well, yeah, I know. Um, I have uh, celebrated Easter, called my parents. They didn't call me back, so I had to call them today. <laughs> so that was uh, successful. Um, I bought a bow, so I'm getting into archery. Nice. Um, and nice. so that's pretty fun. Um, outside of that, just running a lot. Um, I got a race next weekend, so just getting ready for that. So what, what, what kind of race is it? It's a high rocks out in L.A. Okay. All right, because I know I know the one in Austin. What was it, Austin? The last no, one you did, Fort Worth. It's oh, Fort Worth. Yeah, you didn't do so hot. So no, did not. So we're moving on and trying again. So I'm excited. So and what? what so if you don't mind me asking, like yeah. what happened? I mentally had a complete fuck up. Just the entire thing would probably be the greatest, quickest summation of the entire thing. I was okay. like, so I'll be better in Anaheim next weekend, and I am excited to go race. All right. So, do you are you going to be there like a couple of days before just to kind of get the so time I'm zone and everything? So I'm going to go uh, stay with uh, the old uh, stay beefy Nick O'Sully. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to be sleeping on his couch and going to the beach and eating at tide pools and training at Chalk or another gym if we need to shoot content for his new program that he's working on with our buddy Jeremy for uh, performance driven life. So it's pretty cool. But I'm excited to see Nick for a couple of days. So I'm taking five days three days of vacation days from work. So I'm excited to be out in Cali for a couple of days. Nice. I've, I've only been to Cali once. So I've been to San Francisco and, and Travis air force base, which is like ew. even, even more North of California. So just, yeah. ew. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, it was like, it was like 10, 10, 11 years ago. So it's not, it was okay. I guess it was like really touristy, obviously. So, but I, I was good. Yeah. No, Newport beach is the place to be. It's always those weird, like, random parts of like California that are way cooler than like, Oh, I went to San Francisco. Like I rode a trolley up and down a hill. I did I, not do I that. Re- yeah. It's like you didn't, and you didn't recreate the scene from the rock when they're doing the racing through the Humvees and the Ferrari down the middle of the streets, which is a really, really weird movie reference that I'm using right now. So, uh, enjoy that. If you need to watch it on Netflix tonight for anybody listening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Vic, how was your, what's going on with you? What's now with you? 
Oh, man. I mean, got to meet some of my coworkers from my actual job a couple weeks ago. Uh, so that was actually really cool. We all met up in Boston. Had you And met them before? I had only met some of them before, but I had met only a few of them as opposed to like our companies had a lot of like new people join on. So I've talked to a lot of them through like our communications and through Zooms. I have a question. Yeah. Did you try to handshake anyone because you hadn't met them in real life and it was an awkward experience because you had actually interacted with them so much? Um, honestly, we, a lot of us went in for the handshake right off the bat, like, Hey, good to actually meet you. And like, none of no one actually like was like, oh, I already know you. So I don't need to handshake, you No, everyone that was, that was actually pretty common. So that was, Good. that was, that was good. I had an opposite Um, experience. So oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was, it's funny. I went We in all, for the handshake and they were like, why are we shaking hands? I'm like, we have literally never met. And they're like, oh no. oh, Like they, we had interacted so much that they had yeah. forgotten. So I'm glad That's you didn't have so that experience. funny. <laughs> we all just joked like, oh, my God, you're not a simulation. Like, you you, you exist from below This is here. not ex machina. Yes. Good. <laughs> Good. um, yeah, so I got to meet them, which is awesome. We got to go out, hang out a little bit with uh, with the entire group. Um, other than that, Easter was fun. And off-season, uh, quarterfinals and whatnot. Uh, came and went, and now we're just back on to, uh, you know, getting better <laughs> for Okay. what it's worth. All right. All right. Hannah, what, how, what have you been up to? Um, well, um, nothing much. I feel like I'm just like finally getting settled into the job. And, um, of course, quarterfinals came and went, went pretty well for us. We got sixth in the North America East region. Nice. NBD, just no big deal. So that was quite nice. We, we also, our best finish was a strength event and we're not a strong team. So that was also pretty cool. So all in all, like, I can't complain. George is doing great. She's currently uh, pregnant with some puppies. So Congrats. there's her little nose. She's going to probably join the podcast. And We're literally watching her. She is on the podcast. yeah, she is on the podcast. But other than that, Easter was cool. Just uh, I actually got to explore Atlanta a little bit. So uh, I'm not stuck in my uh, little like three mile radius of Alpharetta. I need to actually make it up to see Tom because Yes. he's only a town up. Yep. We should actually probably do this podcast together and then the, the guys can actually stream in. Yeah. And then they can come Yep. up here and we can go for a swim in the lake or whatever. I would love that. Yeah. It sounds like summer camp. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, It, I would we love can, that. we can make it summer camp. I got a whole setup down here in the basement for training. Speaking So, of which, Misfit Athletics yes. summer camp in June. Um, March or er, June 23rd Yes, to March, 25th. March. Yeah, it's like March. Like It's not in March. March. Yeah, it's in, totally in March. <laughs> yeah, it's no snow in March either. <laughs> yeah, Yeah. hopefully, hopefully. But uh, okay, so what happened to me this month? Um, so I got sick right at Easter, like right at like six o'clock. I just started getting like nauseous, started getting the chills, and like it was just a mess. And so went to the room, like had it, like started having like sweats and like getting cold and stuff. And so I was pretty much useless all day today. And you know, having trouble swallowing here and there, but, uh, but, um, my son and I actually, uh, re, re released a new podcast. Yes. So, Okay. so we did it a while back when we moved, when we lived in our old house, but this one, uh, it's called curiosity, the kid. And what we do is, um, we kind of talk about, you know, what happened to him like during the week or whatnot. And then we talk about football cause he's obsessed with football. And then he has like a listener question saying like, okay, how many teams has Geno Smith been on? And so we'll fi we find the answer and then we kind of go over that. And he's been on five, by the way. Okay. So, I was literally doing it. I was like, so okay, Jets, Seahawks, easy. Giants. Giants. Uh, and then oh, there was one more. The Browns. No, 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 no. Ah, dang it. It was Giants, Jets. Was it the Broncos? No, um, Seahawks. And gosh, I'm having a brain fart. I, anyway, he's been on five. Okay. So, um, and then like the, and so we've been doing it weekly. Obviously we didn't do it this week because of Easter and everything like that, but he's obsessed with it. He's like, what are we doing the podcast? When are we doing the podcast? And, it, and he's actually on YouTube too. So that a podcast is on YouTube. So he's like, dad, how many subscribers do we have? 
he's obsessed with that too. And I'm like, I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. And so, um, my wife told a bunch of her friends to, Hey, can you subscribe to, to my son's channel? And so now he's got five subscribers and he's like head over heels about it. He's like, yes, this is oh, amazing. He's making, it. He's making yeah. it. Yeah. So slowly but surely. And I told him like, man, it, it takes time to get to, to where you like, where some of these guys are at that you're watching on YouTube. So just don't look at Logan, Rogan, Rogan. He's probably not even old enough to watch Rogan, but no, not at all. It's so. what is he trying to chase bluey or, um, no, he's, he's a little too old for that. Shoot. What's the, I, whatever the, the power Rangers, that's what he's chasing. Got it. True. True. Yeah. And now, now he's into sports cards too. So there's like a sports card store down the, like down the street from our house. And so he's do like, you get, do you follow the, uh, what is it? Mark Wahlberg's kids Instagram account? No, you got to find him. Cause he does something. It's like Mark Wahlberg's son. And then some other famous celebrity, like they go to the same school and it's like they're friends. It makes sense. But it's like, they do card opening stuff. Oh, okay. Oh, is that okay. Bill Simmons kid that does that or something like that? Maybe I'm Bill not Simmons, into the Bill Simmons does. I'm not into the card. card. Like I only know I'm, it from watching the Wall Street thing on HBO Max. That's the oh, only okay, reason okay. I've done So yeah, so he's obsessed with cards and stuff. And we got like I hooked him up with like for Easter. Well, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. The Easter Bunny gave him some cards, and so, and he's like, I want a Kyle Trask like sign autograph card. And so luckily this card dealer had it, and I was like, okay, I'll I'll take that, and you know, and a couple other things. And he's now he wants to start trading like his old Pokemon cards for stuff too. So, and I'm like, all right, let's go, buddy. Keep it going. All right. Everything comes full circle. Beanie Babies yeah. are next. Yep, of course. Yeah, they're coming, they're coming back. But, yeah, it, he's obsessed with football. Like, that's all he talks about and not, nothing else. He's like, Dad, when did this player play? And I'm like, I don't know. And, like, what, what, year, did, what year did he did he play? And I'm like, I don't know. Did he, And, like, how many years has he been in the NFL? And I'm like, I don't know. And he knows, like, every single season almost to, like, their their record. Especially with the Patriots and stuff like that, because we're big fans of Patriots. So that's but weird. It, Are you from Massachusetts? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, and he, and like he's just obsessed with football. It's it's crazy. Like he'll just re, he'll just like say, you know, like I said before, like the scores of like certain football games and stuff. And we got Madden on the Wii, and so he's like playing with that old school. Old, Wait, your son still has a Wii? Like, what mm -hmm. is this? He's using Madden twelve. Like, who's a quarterback a th a in that league? Thirteen. Like, it's 13. all the Mannings, the Bradys, or Brady. Um, is Russell Wilson even in the league? I don't think yes. so. Yes, no, he... Russell Wilson is in the league in 2012. 13. Really? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, anyway, yeah, so he's playing on the week because we don't, we don't have him on the Xbox. Or Who's the Jets PSP. quarterback in 2013? Oh, it's the Sanchez. Mm-hmm. You're it right. Still it the is. Sanchez. The butt fumble year. The I butt think that fumble. is the butt fumble year. They actually do it in the game, too. Sick. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> let's recreate these wrestlemania moments yes exactly but uh yeah so that's been pretty much like just if it's just family and like soccer and all that crap so um and hopefully getting more podcasts in but uh well we have um the two people below us did quarterfinals and the two people above us above did not do quarterfinals so kind of want to get what you guys and even like uh xander's thoughts on the programming of quarterfinals like how do you think they went and all that stuff? So, uh, Hannah, do you want to go first? Yeah, I mean, I'll talk about I'll talk about team quarterfinals. Uh, yeah, I'll let Vic, yeah, I'll let Vic talk about uh, individual. But I mean, I thought it was really good. It, there was a very similar movement patterns throughout all the workouts. I mean, I think like even in comparison to, I thought I mean I thought individual was actually a really well rounded test. Um, I think it could have been a tad bit heavier. Granted, I know like the 185 bar like could slow people down, but um, I think it could have been a touch heavier. But I loved all the skills. Uh, I think there was a really good blend of barbell to skill work to just overall conditioning for that. For us, I, I mean, it just like felt like I was in a front rack the entire weekend, whether. It was a clean and jerk or a front squat or a shoulder overhead or, or a thruster. A thruster. Um, literally every single event. And we had like something like that. And then, you know, we, we didn't have like that, that. I mean, we didn't have anything high skill, like gymnastics wise, like we had 10 bar muscle ups, two sets of 10 bar muscle ups. Um, we're doing row climbs and sets of two, basically like back and forth between Jordan and me, um, hand Sam walking um and like just 25 foot increments and you had enough rest to you know 
be able to just kick up immediately. So uh, I'm really excited how this is going to set up semifinals because I think this could actually be like, okay, I understand that we need like simpler movements for a team just because you might, you have to, you know, be synced up and there's a lot of more nuance to it, um, at least for video review. So maybe it was good that it was simpler. That way, when we get the semifinals, we can actually test those skills um, and teamwork at the same time. Now, how did you guys do the workouts? Like, did um, you do them like straight through, like one, one through five? Also, or like, looking how- at the events, if anybody needs a tip or help. Um. All right. So we did not do them in order. So we did test two first. That was uh three minutes on, three minutes off. The male male pair does a four hundred meter row at the same time on two rowers into 10 synchro shoulder overhead at 185 and then max rep rope climb in remaining time. And then as the guys rested, the girls would go in that second three minute interval. Each pair does that three times. Uh, The girls wait for the shoulder overhead was 125. So we did that first just because it was going to be harder to just deal with the classes going on um, and things like that. So we just wanted to get that out of the way. That way we weren't, you know, in the way of CrossFit United by any means. Mm. So got that done. Um, that was uh, an interesting workout for us. Our uh, it, our plan kind of fell apart and I was freaking out. So that's kind of a, how we started <laughs> the weekend uh, or the week since it was Wednesday through Friday. But then um, Thursday morning, we did test one and that was AMRAP 15, 10 synchro front squats, 185 for the guys, 125 for the girls, all four of us synchro, but only the top of the rep was synchronized, not the bottom, which is weird, but valid for video review. And then uh, 75 feet handstand walking each. It was like the, um, you always had one male, one female go at the same time. Then the third workout we did was 3A and 3B, which the 3A was a relay, started with 10 bar muscle ups, 20 deadlifts, 275 for guys, 185 for girls, 30 GHDs, and then the 20 deadlifts, and then 10 bar muscle ups. So it went uh, female, male, female, male, and then immediately into a five minute AMRAP of max clean and jerk set, 275, 185, which that got spicy. It was so much fun. And I think by minute two, I was catching them like Josh Bridges back in the day in 2016. <laughs> so, so that was uh yeah that was that was so much fun though and then and then we did test uh four which is the last one which was amrap i believe seven um one male female pair goes and then the other goes of one shuttle run two synchro dumbbell thrusters 50s with th- and 35s two shuttle runs for thrusters and so on so all in all we only changed like one order and then you know after friday morning we were done nice nice so how did you guys like set up the <laughs> how did you guys set up the cameras and stuff because obviously with like, the 75 foot like you know handstand walk and all that stuff like I, and i know i know in that area where you guys typically train it's like kind of pretty thin so how did yeah. you guys do the the camera uh positioning so luckily we did it at a time where we did it like right as the um I mean, classes would end or right before they began. So we had also like the CrossFit United section as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we just saw it straight. We couldn't really get like a corner by any means. I think most of the time they want us to be like at somewhat of an angle, but we just, we just shot it straight on that way. It's like, they could easily see like, I mean, like a squat death angle and things like that. Um, But at least we had room. And then, um, man, they are so thorough at TTT. It's like, in, insane they also like if you ever thought it was really hard to measure a rope this is what training think tank does they have a 15 foot pole that they taped a tape measure to and they show the pole and then they put it up next to the rope and they're like you saw that the pole was 15 feet and you see that the tape line is at the end of the pole and i was like that is the most genius thing mm-hmm. on the planet oh that would have saved me so much so tip <laughs> to you know, all of our listeners out there. Anyway. Um, Meanwhile, Victor built a 15-foot pyramid of plyometric boxes and dude, stood up every single time have, like it was Tetris. You have no idea. I got back from my all-staff meeting to go help um, my team just judge them. 
and no one no one was able to was like hey uh can someone climb the rope so we can you know sketchily grab the tape hold it with our teeth get up there and like put it up there what's worse i was running off like an hour of sleep and i had some air maxes on that i did not want to mess up so i had to go up there with my socks on and i was literally on that rope for like a minute and a half just holding oh, on God. for dear life it was the slowest <laughs> most painful thing that's awful it was it was pretty bad All right, it was pretty I bad will, uh, yeah so now you know for any other qualifier or next year that you just get a 15 foot pole and you're okay how about 39 and a half i got one during christmas every year do we just a fest, a festivus pole. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah. Essentially, he's yeah, like, yeah. I'm, ex- I'm excited for him to air some grievances in a little bit. <laughs> but they do a really oh, good job there. They, they're very professional. It's, um, definitely a sight to see. I wish like they actually had like the, I don't know. I think like the behind the scenes stuff is really cool to see. So I mean, plus it helps out other people too. So I know how hard it was for me to, you know, set up my equipment um in gyms in the past i mean vic just told his story so i think i have it, a feeling that's most people's like experience though mm-hmm. like i yeah. i we've all seen it it's like that's probably one of the best and i'm assuming it's just pvc pipe right yeah yeah it's like, it's, like, like it's very cheap pipe. from home depot and like again they're like again ttt relative to most gyms has more athletes that are coming through there to do some kind of qualifier with that right but it honestly is probably the most like probably 15 feet of pvc pipes max 30 bucks i would even yeah. say less than that yeah like you and probably I'm being don't like, even need you probably don't even need the full 15 you pro- you could just do eight or nine and have someone who's like pause <laughs> <laughs> i was really just like i was like are you really we're doing this I was yeah. Like, really yeah yeah yeah, yeah. all right yep. that's your we're sound here. clip that's your sound <laughs> clip there's your insulin moment yeah yep, yep. <laughs> um other than that it was really cool to also have another team go at the same time of i mean i think it's just like i mean that's just fun in the individuals it's easy to get everybody together but when you have a second team going and you're trying to strategize like all together it's you know you're not a team of four you're a team of eight and then when you count you know everybody at ttt that was helping out i mean we're way more than that so um, all in all, we got both teams semifinals and Orlando is going to be super fun. So how's the team gelling right now? Cause I know it's, there's three new people actually, you know, I guess the three other people have been pretty familiar with training think tank, but you just came in. So how was, how was the team gelling? The team is good. So, I mean, I knew, I knew Mike before, I mean, he was with TTT. Um, I knew, I was like, I've seen Jordan like grow you know, rise through CrossFit because, you know, she was in North Carolina when I was in Virginia, when I first started CrossFit. Mm -hmm. So like all in all, like that's been really fun. Plus Jordan and I get to see each other, you know, most days anyway here. Um, I think the only, um, I guess just like getting to know him was Tanner and, you know, like I love him because he's like, he has like a really strong work ethic. He, um, I mean, I pride or I like, I'm really proud that he has that because I wouldn't want to be on a team without, you know, someone that is like, that isn't dedicated. Mm -hmm. So um, he's probably like the most dedicated on the team. And it's just, it's really cool to see it. Like, I don't know. It like, and he's the class clown of the team. So he always makes us laugh and smile and he plays Morgan Wallen. So I'm pretty happy at the gym where everybody else maybe isn't as happy. Is that country music? Yes. Yes, Tom. I don't yes. know. I don't. I don't listen to country. How so. do you not know who Morgan Wallen is? I don't listen to because country. this guy probably listens to nineties hip hop. Listen to like, like Tribe Called Quest. Big pun. Okay. Also, he, he has recordings from ninety four point five of the Ramiro and Pebbles yes. on yes. regular cassette tape still. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I just I just don't listen to country anyway. So um, he probably uses a Zune player from Microsoft. I do actually. No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so anyway, so Vic, how was your quarterfinals, and what did you think about it? Uh, individual quarterfinals was fun. Um, it was a learning experience. I mean, my type of fun is different 
Uh, we ended up doing, so the team that I was working with um, this year, uh, 1977, who also punched their ticket to semifinals, it's going to be kind of cool to see them. Um, we all, a few of us decided to do individual just to, you know, for ha-has. And we did workout number one first. I did not do that well uh, the first go around. So in the morning, the next morning following up, and workout number one was the uh, front squat at 225. The, it was the 9, uh, 15, 21. So it was nine front squats, nine handstand walks unbroken. And then it was 15 front squats at 185. And then 15 ring muscle ups and 21 at 135 and 21 wall facing handstand push ups with a cap of like 15 minutes or something of that nature. Um, so that I thought was just a really, a really smooth workout, like a really well written workout, just because it just your shoulders are just all sorts of fatigue from every angle. And not only that, but it's also the front rack from the front squats. Like the front squats are a little bit of a throw, like kind of a throwaway with the weight being like 225, 185, 135. I was like, you probably could have bumped that up. You probably could have made those front squats a little bit more of a barrier. You don't have to go full 275. You could have gone 255 and then 205 and 155 just to make it so that no one can blast through it. Well, I mean, some could. But yeah, either way, did that one twice. Um, but I did one, then I did two in the morning with the crossover, uh, single unders, and snatch. It was a dumbbell snatch and walking lunges. That was actually the sneakiest workout in terms of losing time. Because if you don't hit those crossovers unbroken your entire score is, 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 is ruined. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how fast you snatch that dumbbell. It doesn't matter how fast you lunge. You can't make up time on not going unbroken for the single under uh, crossovers. It just doesn't, it doesn't make any, it doesn't, you might as well just stop the workout and re redo it. <laughs> um, and we actually found that to be true where someone else redid it. Um, the next, like a cup after me before the deadline. And they were like, yeah, when I hit my crossovers unbroken, it was a completely different workout and I got way farther and way deeper. Um, so yeah. Then how long did it take you to get the crossovers down? Oh, I whipped myself a good for a good 30 to 45 minutes the night before. <laughs> and then I whooped myself a little bit more. Till I had some marks and I felt good about it um, that morning, and I and then I realized that I just ruined my speed rope because I have stainless steel, and like uh, now it's all now it's all like crinkled up. Yeah, I was still able to I was still able to do them with yeah. that with that cable. It's not a big deal. But do you use an RX Smart Gear or do you use the? Um, I have a Rogue SR2. RPM. No Rogue SR2. Okay. Yeah, um, it's and then you know honestly I was like. You know what? Had we had I had a gotten a little bit more time with like a beaded rope that's a little bit longer, or just any rope that's a little bit longer, it probably would have been just fine. But at the end of the day, like I just feel like there's certain implements that okay, cool. If this is fair game. Now I need to make sure like it was. Oh, I gotta have a drag rope. I've gotta have a Zeus rope. I gotta have this rope. I gotta have now. Now I gotta add a beaded rope. It's like I feel like CrossFit is and and RXSG are just like, hey, how do we make these people spend more money? Um, oh, I know. We need a special rope for every single workout. Great, great, great. Okay, so how do we bundle that? And then CrossFit gives RXSG exactly what they need, and RXSG goes on and says, hey, we have a sale on all these ropes that could show up in semifinals or whatever, and they just they end up selling a boatload of ropes. <laughs> um, nothing against them. I love RXSG. They're, they're good. They're good people. Um. So you but, went one, two, you hit one again. Yep. And, and then, then I hit three that night. Okay. Which honestly, it felt the best to do three workouts in one day as opposed to doing one or two. Yes. And I surprised myself on that one because 275 for a jerk is kind of my max because I'm pretty awful at overhead stuff. 
and I got into the round of four or something. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, it's good. I'm like, yeah, like yeah. 275 is my quoted max. So I'm, did you I, like go really fast on your burpees, or were you just steady and just like? No, just, I just I those were a throwaway. The burpees yeah. are a throwaway. They really are. Um, if you made that, if you made that weight 255, everyone would have finished. Not even that. No, I think if you would have baited someone to make the weight just a little bit lighter, you probably would have seen people go just a bit harder on those burpees. Because the people who had the had the record breaking times or whatever for those yeah. were already super strong and they just basically quick singles, three seconds each one, good to go, and then the their burpees were you, you could make up the burpee time anywhere. But that might have been my only that might have been the one thing that I thought would have been cool would was to have seen if they if they had dropped the weight a little bit lower, see how much tighter the gap would have been. But then I also agree that you do need to have something heavy like two seventy five or maybe even a little bit more, so that when it comes semifinals, these guys are tried and tested so that you know that they're this isn't gonna be one of those I think they don't want to repeat something in, in the CrossFit Games history from way, way long ago where they put a barbell out there and no one can touch it. And you just have people flailing and struggling to hit one rep. So this is a, it's a really good way to weed that out. Mm-hmm. I, I so, agree. Uh, yeah. And how'd you do, so then how'd you do your day? Okay. So you did, so did you do your workout starting Thursday night? Thursday night I did one. Okay. So what'd you do Saturday? Did what was the the rest of your workouts order? Saturday was just four. Oh, okay. Saturday was just four. There's the, the thing is when you're in the area that that I'm in, it's you have to go to different gyms to do different workouts because mm-hmm. again, this is the other problem is getting the right getting having all the equipment in the right area in one gym. You have to have a really nice gym to have all of that readily available. Um, so you end up having to piece things together. Like, Hey, who's got multiple GHDs that are actually quality. Who's got the rope with the 15 foot climb. Who's got the rig next to a certain rope or an area that's actually solid. Who's got the floor that's actually flat. So you can handstand walk without feeling like you're going to like hit a divot or something. Um, you know, all of these, all of those things, all those variables come into play. And then trying to find the right camera angle, trying to make sure that your phone has enough storage, trying to make sure the backup one has a storage. You're just trying to do all these things, and it's as if like preparing for the workout is more taxing than the actual workout. Um, do you use a GoPro or like what kind of camera did you use? My iPhone. Okay. Yeah, I use my. If you iPhone. understand I how used, to use Do Not Disturb I, in airplane mode? You'll yeah, be. exactly. I put I went on <laughs> Wadproof, put it on there. But I've had that I've had that bite me in the ass before. Yeah. I've had I've had wadproof crash on me. I've had other timers crash on me doing the airplane mode and whatnot. Um so you know you have to set up the backup as well. Yeah. Um or you just realize that it didn't work or your judge says, Hey, your camera stopped and you just say, Okay, we gotta quit the workout and we gotta reset and go again. <laughs> um, you know, it's just it's part of the game. So what'd you think of the V ups? I was just gonna um, ask him that. Damn it! Yeah. So <laughs> hey, man, this is a four person podcast. Let us I know. All talk. <laughs> I, I know. Um, the V ups. I'm honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> I have two thoughts about this. One, I thought it was great that they added them in uh, because it's a very simple movement. But two, the standards they put on that were absolute dog shit. Um, and I just I, I look at the feeling that you get is the same feeling you get in an affiliate class when when a coach gives you that gives the class the workout and you say, OK, I'm going to pride myself in holding up the standards and you do it. And then you go back and you, you know, if you're new to CrossFit, this is kind of what used to happen to me is, OK, I'm going to make sure I move properly. I do all this stuff right and then you see someone else post a score, you know, when you're brand new, and you're like, "Wow, I I got three rounds, or I got this many." And then this one person puts up like seven rounds, and you're like, "I saw them; they were doing shit for reps. 
they were they were they were they were bending their arms they weren't doing this and i was like and then i started looking i you know i didn't i didn't spend too much time i started looking at everyone doing v-ups and i was like okay so they're touching their heels and their feet are coming up uh, uh separately they're spreading wide they're barely touching the ground like i'm like wait so could i have gone faster had i been able to just instead of trying to do exactly what the model said which is have your hands actually touch the ends of your toes or what was the whole, what was the purpose? You know, um, that was my, that was the one, that was the gripe The I do. I do like that. They put it in there. It just needed to be better uh, standardized and they needed to make it more clear, um, you know, as to what it is, because then it just became a, it became a, how fast can you fold yourself in half? No matter what happens with your hands or your feet in the process. And that to me, I was like, okay, well, if that was the case, why don't you just do like, fuck it, why don't you just do burpee broad jumps for distance? Doesn't matter how you get there, just get there. Um, so and then, I, okay, which is fair, and I'll have more follow up when we come back to me. And then I guess you did. So you did that Saturday, and then how did you feel going into Sunday then after yeah, having buddy, done? I what? was cooked. Okay, that's what I figured. I, I was, was like, absolutely I was like, the feeling. I was like, "You did four, and then you did five. Oh, right. So, oh, yeah. poor and not, guy. And not for the and not for the reasons that you think. My core was fine. My core was fine. I was just mentally zapped. Oh, okay, yeah. And I kind of felt the same way last year, <laughs> where like Sunday, I like don't. I feel like in the future, I never want to have to do a workout on a Sunday alone as your finale. <laughs> Because God, that is the absolute worst. You're you're getting ready to you're warming up to go do the workout, and you're like, okay, this is the last one. All right, cool, cool. Here we go. Let's get going. And you're just like, what? Why am I doing this? Like, you know what, what fixes that? What? Training on a Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> what? What a savage. <laughs> Guys, just being honest, just trying to like put his feels out there. You know, you know, who, you know who, you know who does, clouds. you know who does that. Me, me, <laughs> and it just, I was still, I was still zapped. I was still zapped. I was just like, all right, it is what it is. Um, it was, it was a fun workout. I liked the the deadlifts and the the mixture of gymnastics. I never realized how much grip is use on chest to bar and muscle ups and then your deadlifts so that when you get to the rope climbs <laughs> you don't feel it you don't feel it until rep seven eight and nine rep seven eight and nine of the rope climbs you're literally pardon me, your shit's numb it is numb and you're like am i pulling or am i holding and you have to actually literally look at your hand like Ace Ventura looks at his legs to see if there's an air, like a like an actual like spear in it. Yeah, <laughs> you're like ah, is is my hand holding onto something or am I just? Is it? <laughs> I can't feel it. So you're looking at it. You're visually looking at your hand to make sure you're grabbing the rope. <laughs> that's that's what it was. Well, that's why Misfit actually programmed the the farmers walks, the heavy top kettlebell farmers walks during the oh, accessory work. Did those? Did those today? <laughs> My forearms are still on fire. Yep. Um. That was that was fun. Yeah, we did those. It was supposed to be dumbbells, farmers carries, but I have a janky seventy-five pound one, so I just use the kettlebells. And kettlebells are easier. Hot just, take. I'm just kettlebells hot, are easier. I I understand that people not, say not, that. Not not hurting you at all because I do it all the time because that's what they use in high rocks, but I use the dumbbells for training. But. Oh, I would love, I would love to. No, I just have, I have a bent, uh, the the dumbbell yeah. that I have. We I have saw it on the Instagram seven... story. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's <laughs> janky. It's janky. It is bent and it rolls away from you. Yeah. Still effective. Um, Yeah, so that was quarterfinals. I thought overall the test was great. Um, Great for the semifinals. But also it's inconclusive to really give a full judgment because I honestly feel like we're such a knee jerk, um, like um, uh, community, that we don't take a look at, well, what's coming up next, like what is this setting us up for, what are we preparing for to see in the semifinals and in the CrossFit Games, and 
we have to judge that as a whole. Whereas, you know, you could say, oh, the open, oh, that was dumb. They should have done this. They should have done that. And arguably, the shuttle, we talked about that. And then we look at individual quarterfinals. We're like, oh, well, this was kind of silly. We shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done this. I'm like, well, we don't know what the next step, excuse me, or the next iteration is into semifinals or into the games. And were these tests adequate to make sure that they were ready for the tests for semifinals and for the tests of the CrossFit games? And then the real question is, are we looking to, are we, is CrossFit looking at the test as a whole already and saying, how do we make sure that we have the best people that are suited to um, complete the workouts we've already planned? Or are we, are we trying to decide what the fittest is? I don't know, like, and, and, and some of that inner, like, kind of, you know, overlaps, but it almost feels like they're trying to select for the workouts they have, like, okay, someone is going to really excel or do their best or be the strongest for these workouts and going to give us the spectacle that we want if they can do well on these earlier tests. Uh, is that, does that sound crazy? I feel like that's kind of where, where, where yeah. we're at right now. No, it's like, and it's hard to judge because like the thing is, it's like people are trying to, everyone's trying to blow up. It's like, I guess we're going to go to me who didn't do quarterfinals. I did <laughs> yes, qualify. You're, you're next. Yeah. I get, I like, so I've crowdsourced and talked to um, some of my friends in the space. The crossovers were a good test. The V-ups were just a dumpster fire. I think everyone can agree. The V-ups should have just not been there. Yep. It, the workout one, you could have kept them, had them do 50 up front, and then you never did them again. It was probably like one idea, but there wasn't really. And the problem is we're also trying to judge Bosman and really he's only had, this is his first actual year. Mm -hmm. You can, I, I will hand up in a test. I would say a lot of last year's programming up until the games was probably already pre-done by Dave. You, nobody knows that for a fact. Nobody could tell me it's a fact, but I will just raise my hand and just say this is his first year. So I'm giving him the out. But again, we saw in the open, the one rep max thruster was an issue because of people moving their knees. Reps. Yeah. Fine. It's a heavy one rep max thruster, whatever. Then it's um, the the shuttle run walk, shuttle walking, and you can get a good score. Crowdsourcing from individual and team athletes there wasn't really any tests that really made people have to do anything out there that really was like you can full-on send taste pennies really reach and i think to victor's point what you were trying to say is like they're not testing the fittest on earth because that's the games they're trying to get the most well-rounded athletes as much as they can because they're get you have to have you got to reduce the population from okay you have a hundred percent participation in the open you're going to take the top ten percent then we got to whittle that down to probably the point oh five percent is probably how many athletes get to semis and teams the crossovers was good if you could do them and that's a just a learned inherent skill effect probably which I I did like and the wall facing handstand push ups was good. It was just like one of those things that you're just like, really, you guys didn't see that one coming. Really? Like you, it was probably the only thing, but it, when it came down to testing strength on the team side, there was a lot of people that Hannah probably saw on the leaderboard. People kind of just sandbagged the first part and then just knocked out. And so the scoring kind of went wonky on that test three. No, I mean, I, um, at least like, with um at least with like that workout that one was like very nuanced because it really everyone was recovered except for the per last person in the relay so it was really like all right hopefully you have strong girls because they need to get the bulk of your reps like jordan and i almost got 30 reps um on our own versus like um mike couldn't really like go do a clean and jerk until like i don't know the 90 second mark so it was just, <laughs> and even then, like I've heard, I heard people on teams where the second guy went so hard, he couldn't do a single clean and jerk. So it's yeah. like, so like it had those nuances. And I, I really, I really did like that. 
Um, I also like the strength under fatigue, both like in the team setting and an individual. Um, I I mean, I'm always a proponent of not just having a one or max strength just thrown in there. So I like that's why I like quarterfinals a little bit more this year. Um, but I mean, like all in all, I think it's um, we got the well-rounded test we needed. And, you know, like I think. I mean, Boz, just like Dave, is trying to create a story. So it's just kind of being like, all right, what's the next generation? Is um, like They're breaking what- out trapeze at semifinals. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, we have to go swing and hopefully we, you know, reach and make it to the other side and not die. Um, something like, you know, something you know, like that. I wanted to also note that you said, you said something that was really cool. It was talking about the strength under fatigue. And being able to do the clean and jerks was something that we actually talked about on our last pod about the thruster thinking, hey, why don't we do five minutes of max thrusters at a heavier weight and go and lo and behold, maybe this was why they didn't do that because they were saving it for team quarterfinals to do this. Hey, this is the test that we wanted um, later on in the stage that would, that would more adequately test it um, with our set weights. So I don't, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool. You know, some of the things that we were asking for during the open, we did get in quarterfinals. I would say they did a better job testing the strength in the open when they got to the snatching workout than they did. But it's like kind of like you're like, if they reduced the weight from 275 to 155, I think that was like really the breakoff point And they knew that they could do it that way because there was a lot of women like who made quarterfinals that struggled at 185 and then 275 like the pe- like and that's the hard part when you're delineating it's like you look at cuz you compare we all compare semifinals based on games athletes and there's a difference between the bubble athlete going to semis and then like your um uh Lucas your Chandlers your Colton Mertens it's like they're going to just they don't have a problem at 275 the quarterfinals is make sure you're like videos work video, and you, you know? know how to like and you don't have an Annika Greer like like yeah. that's essentially what you're more worried about but and plus I, I think that 275 when they added on there it kind of makes the people that were, just got into quarters and are not really the fittest to say hey you need to work on a lot more stuff to get to where you want to go and obviously like you know so maybe some people that got into quarter um, quarterfinals can, couldn't even clean a jerk two seventy five, like not even close, sure. not, not even close. And so yeah. th- th- that was, was a big, a, I, that was a big eye opener for a lot for a lot of people. I can imagine that was a big gripe too. A lot of people were complaining about that, and a lot of well, people made their too, made their tough content shit. about Sorry. it. Yeah, exactly. Well, that was like that was well, my like, thing. those people were probably the people who were like flying through the deadlifts and like workout five right like they're like that's the thing it's like everything comes back to baseline where like you have to be so well-rounded to keep moving on Mm. i just i i hear like when i think about this i think of like the people who griped about 225 and the snatch during the open it's like bro you weren't even getting through 185 like those are those (laughs) people like those are those are the people i'm talking to i'm like oh it's 225 (laughs) it's like dude you barely did a strict handstand push-up like what like you're like we gotta like put those building blocks in of like, cause a lot of people yeah. were like, cause it was funny cause we predicted it and we like, weren't really close to guessing it. Like Victor was closest, but like the, the three minutes and just continuing on. Um, but it was just like funny. Cause I, like you could just see people just got to one thirty five and then just got steamrolled getting to the wall. Yeah. And I, I think it's, I think it's just something funny to hear all the complaints about, Oh, well, I paid money and I mm. wanted a test and I wanted this. No, you didn't. You didn't want a test. You, you just wanted, wanted to be your friends and you needed you want, Yeah, exactly. You wanted a medal. You wanted to you wanted to run your race and you wanted it to look good on the board. And when you got a workout that completely stopped you, you're like, well, I just wasted my money. I'm like, no, no. you wasted your time this whole year focusing on shit you needed to focus on. Because and you're like, oh, I can it. power clean 135 <laughs> and do 20 ring muscle ups. And I can do like shuttle walks and burpee pull ups. Like, and I'm not strong. Yeah. It's like, you probably didn't thrust all that much either, buddy. So please kick rocks and carry on. Yeah. I love the, I love the people that do races. And then once they get their like little, like, 
fake metal that they walk around town with it after like at, like yeah. like hours after you're just like oh you ran the 5k for mike michael scott's for tots uh like 5k it's like bro just quit it like yeah it's like come on it. it's like hey that you, guy's an inspiration he ate so much fettuccine alfredo and milk that day of he's carbo loading hard okay <laughs> success yeah yeah exactly so uh yeah i so um I, i'm actually looking forward to kind of the programming since like we did kind of say it's almost like a story from you know the open to quarters to semi so um I kind of want to get what your guys' thoughts are and like what's the programming going to be like for semifinals. I know, I know we had a bunch of other lists and stuff like that that we we're going to do, um, but uh, we can kind of do that later. It's getting a little late, and I think Hannah's got to leave in a little bit. I think she's got to take care of her pregnant dog. Yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> we can stay on. But um, what, is, what is Hannah thinking? She's going to be doing at semis. What am I going to do? Worm? Well, I, I mean. I mean, I hope. Who knows? Like at this point, uh, like who who knows? I feel like the worm is f- being phased out. Unfortunately, like um, really. Sad. Well, I I don't think it's I don't think it's going to be phased out at semifinals. I think the worm you have to be good at the worm at semifinals, and then the games, it's like you just have to if you have access to something like Big Bob, man, you're going to do really great. Um. But really, they don't tr- they don't test your worm skills at the games anymore. So uh, outside we'll of the- what was it the last year in Carson when they did land worm, earthworm, or earthworm water? Oh. They did worm stuff in the finale. I thought wasn't the worm in the finale? I just don't oh. think the worm ish. Like Hannah, are you saying the worm is no longer an issue because enough people at the highest level have practiced with it? Yeah, okay. it's like oh, okay, okay. Like so many gyms have worms now. Um, you, like you know it's going to show up, whereas like. All right, Mayhem has Big Bob. That's Shocker. it. Shocker. What else do they don't have? Yeah. It's like... Well, no, someone built that for them, so yeah. Rogue didn't. Uh, so you just need a handyman to put something. I'm 100 percent Richard Froning Jr. the second. 100 percent texted Bill like, "Hey, can I get the schematics for this?" And he's like, I mean, "Sure, here you go." Probably, probably, but you know, like Rogue didn't send it to them. Anyway, it's also uh, yeah, so agreed. But, but um, I mean, at semifinals, I was like, again, like team wise, I hope more skills are uh, announced. I think it'd be really cool to bring like the handstand obstacle course back. I think, and I think it would be cool if pegboards came down from the games to semifinals because I actually think pegboards are easier than like a uh, legless rope climb. I think they're easier to judge than a legless rope climb. Um. So, like, I think that would be really cool. That would be, like, a cool, like, new thing, but not so new thing. Um, Other than that, individuals, man, I have absolutely no clue. So, um, it would be cool to see just, like, what tests do come out. Um, I think it's going to be some sort of, you know, hip flexor strength and endurance thing that's, you know, maybe not the L-sit rope climb that's going to come out at the games, but um, something along those lines. Like that. What do you think the strength is that they're going to test at the game, like for the teams, not the individuals, but for the teams? Do you think? Um, I think it would be weird to have another snatch ladder. Um, but unfortunately, like just because like that's the movement pattern we didn't test. I mean, it'd be cool if we had to like over at squat. It'd be cool. Um, or, or snatch complex. Yeah, like a snatch Ooh. complex, hang snatch type thing. You just roll out, you know, the handstand walk or the hang snatch handstand walk for the teams. Uh, that would be <laughs> that'd be fun. Um, you watch, they're like, this is not a shot at the teams, but there are a lot of teams that qualified that, like, you know, the teams that are like, I check marked box to go to semis, and there's people that are going to compete for going to the games. Not saying that like you get, you're on a team that's competing to go to the games. There's gonna be some washed individuals that cannot do an obstacle course and or a heavy snatch or probably both. I mean, I know, I know, but you know they've they've tested that in the past for teams, and yeah, you know people couldn't get. You know, it's like we, you know, that was thrown in regionals in 2018. We've had five years to improve on it. You can throw it in teams again, or just. Just set up some pylon to make us just like zigzag like a dog agility course. Where are the traffic cones? Where is my safety <laughs> sergeant leading my line? Like, let's do that. We can do pirouettes. We did that, the random handstand hold last year. Um, 
you can throw this at teams. Like we're like we can adapt just as well as the individuals. So like I think it'd be fun to get some of that thrown our way. You know what would be kind of fun to see? I know it sounds a little bit boring, but if you're doing a team event, I'd I'd love to see like a handstand walk race where you have to move a piece a little bit further out while other members are doing some sort of a static hold. So that whenever they tag someone back in, that they have to reach that point in order to get to the next one. I don't, I don't know. I feel like that would be a really cool, a really cool event if you could. I don't know how to program that or what would that would what that would look like. But it'd be like maybe like um, dead hang and also upside down, like just um, handstand hold while another two teammates do unbroken segments to get further, you know, back and forth. Oh, okay. Okay, I was just trying to like like think it through in my head what you're like so kind of like the that weird ass rowing workout they did at the games last year like where they were having to hold in a box. Yeah. 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 Nobody could tell me how anything was scored on that workout by the way. I, <laughs> like, I watched honest, it in I person. Even, I don't even I don't even know the teams now. At that I don't, point time. I was like <laughs> I was confused yeah, was because I was like do you keep scoring for meters if everyone's down? Because there was quite a few teammates that were not doing well. Like, it was like... <laughs> I don't know. That was just like a cluster. You had to do a tandem row. I, you had to match. You were hopefully matching the person in front of you. You hope you're going at a fast pace. I think there was a lot in that workout. Is it? Is it, it going to about it with the clean and jerks being done in quarterfinals? I, I, I don't see them doing a strength for clean and jerks. They probably do what, like a, it'd be cool to see maybe, I don't know, front squats and save the snatch off or whatever for the, uh, for the games. Or like a team one rep max overhead squat. Yeah. Uh, the amount of dislocated elbows. Oh yeah. I mean, oh, I think I think that would be really fun. Jordan and I said we wanted like a one rep max shoulder overhead at some point in our future, but um, I don't know. Like, I just, I just, I hope it's not just a one rep max strength test. I hope something's involved. Um, whether I mean, it, if it is the ladder again, I wouldn't be opposed. If it's you know we have to do something and then hit a heavy lift, that would be cool. Um, I just, you know, like sometimes I'm just like I, um. I don't think a one rep max really needs to be tested. I mean, it's cool, cool to see for the fans, but is it, yeah, like you said, it's, I don't think it's really worth it for, you know, to the teams or, or even individuals to kind of fry their central nervous system just to get a one rep max. And then that can hinder like the rest of the weekend for them. Yeah. Oh, you know how they did uh, that, the peer, the, is it the parallel walks or the, the P, the P, the P, yeah, the, the pirouette, the, the, the pirouette, yeah, like the, 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 the parallel I'm bars. Not, I'm, I'm not, not a P, I'm not yeah. a P handstand walks, okay? I called them the P <laughs> rods or something. I don't, I, they said P rods or P sticks, and I was like, come on, guys, that can't be the only, that can't be the name. But I was imagine it. I think something that'd be really cool would be to see synchro ring muscle ups, but at the end of the synchro ring muscle ups, they then have to do strict ring dips in a synchro version as well. Where teams have to jump those up and standards do that. would be egregious. Oh to... man, lock out they... at the top. <laughs> you remember, you, so where I do you hit the bottom? What's the yeah, bottom that's the problem. It's like, like body, like so. It's and then where's the top? How do you, it's Ooh. Victor? When you go home tonight, I don't know if you've ever seen this regionals event, but I will tell you. I think it's was it 2016 dumbbell 2016 snatch? when they blew out there when everyone yes. blew out their. Go packs. watch that event and how much of a dumpster fire judging that was. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I do remember that. Yeah, my boy Chase Smith uh, blew his peck out on that one. No, Olsen blew it out in training and still made the games that year, which was still wild. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. But that's like, that's the, the cool part is like, you think like the worst part is like coming up with a cool workout. And then there's me who just immediately like the judging standard would be egregious. And you're like, shit. It's like, I mean, I think that's the cool, problem. It's like, like, that's the problem with V ups and like doing ring dips anywhere. It's like, that's why the, the, the parallel walk like where you had to do the the, par- the parallel bars into the ring dip, I thought was easier because you knew what extension was. It's, but 
Um, would, would they do would they do something with like Wadapalooza did with the three teams? Obviously, it's three teams, but like they have someone do like the bar muscle ups and the other person do ring muscle ups and the kind of it's like almost like synchro. Oh yeah, the synchro ring hey, and bar muscle up or something. Yeah, yeah. Hey, whoa, I'm so back. excited to watch people get kicked in the face. <laughs> I actually think it's easier um, at like a semifinal because a, I mean, you're farther apart, but then like you also like typically you'd be like two people do bar muscle ups, one person does ring muscle ups. Mm-hmm. And you guys gotta like switch it out to see whoever like you know whoever needs a break and like the last person goes to ring muscle ups and try to get his like hang on to get as many as they can or something like that. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I think it would be cool, like, I mean, um, an iteration, like, with ring muscle-ups like that, just because, okay, we had, we had like, a similar thing with bar muscle-ups in, you know, quarterfinals. It's, all right, so, like, our last guy got fried um, and had to, really, like, really push and hold on for bar muscle-ups. Like, why don't we, like, have a similar thing with ring muscle-ups? Why don't we test, like, this time, okay, we have to test the females. Like, it's, like, that's how, like, the storyline can go. Or they can get a barbell and just have a couple of people do ground to like shoulder overhead, and then they have two people on the side and carry up to another station. Then they do another ground to like shoulder to overhead, like the old grid stuff. Oh my gosh, I don't need grid league back. <laughs> don't bring grid league back. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, let it be. Let it lie in South Florida where nobody else pays attention to it until it's on the Instagram Reels feed, and I hit do not include this. Um, <laughs> oh dang Shit. Is- harsh takes harsh takes that grid league looks good online wow wow um but like that's the hard part is like predicting it's like there has to they're gonna you could literally have a dartboard and like have think, all the movements on the yeah, dartboard like, and just throw thing. a it's dart like, but at it, it and then there and then like the dart immediately goes to like this like piece of like chalk on the side like and it's a chalkboard and it's like we have double under crossovers coming into individuals. It's like you can't do synchro double under crossovers. That's not a thing. Like, Surprise! It's going like, to be synchro GHDs and toast to bar. We have team All double Dutch competitions. <laughs> That's what we're oh coming God. to here. Hot scotch, hot so scotch, that would definitely. Be so much fun. I think RXSG just put in a new patent for an extra long rope. Yes, uh, oh, so. exclusively. God, <laughs> my God. Like, but that's where we're at. So, I guess, like, do we want to do quick hits on everything else, real quick? Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All right. Um, well, I mean, Xander, since you're the one that's running the show right now, so I might as well go for it. <laughs> All right. Um, Sorry, Tom, Tom, what are your thoughts on Brendan Snyder being a new underdogs coach? Man, I'm excited for him, to be honest with you. like I, I had no idea this was a thing until I got the notes because I, he just updated his Instagram profile. I swear. Yeah. Man, you didn't know. So, so oh. I, so I found out by I, I was scrolling Instagram and all of a sudden I see him like talk about underdog athletics and I'm like, the hell and i'm like so i messaged him and i was like so when did you leave you know deca and 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 the deca comp to underdogs like oh i just started with them and he's actually helping out like writing all the programs for the individual athletes that's wild because i literally saw him at tfx at the end of january and i was like he it seemed like everything was great I mean, I don't know, he, it was he must great. Have got a... Maybe he just, he just had a better. No, it's better like there's like again, there's probably a lot more to it, but that would be a good guess for the future. Um, so uh, Hannah, since uh, we're also super good friends with Brendan, how do we feel about this? Oh, I'm so happy for him. Um, even just like talking to him, there's so much growth for him at Underdogs. Uh, I think, and I think he's like I learned so much from Michelle when I was with Decca. Um, that now he's just been giving the opportunity to work with more high level athletes, be more involved in the day to day programming at underdogs um, and be in like, be in the talks about how they could push underdogs like into like forward into the future, which I think like, that's what, I mean, that's what he wants. And that's, you know, that's what you want as a coach is just to be able to grow and just expand your repertoire more. So I am so happy for him. Good. And then uh, Victor, totally change of pace. How do we feel about Ricky not being a part of the season anymore? Uh, I'm just looking forward to see what he does next year. I mean, it, it, it's it's part of the it's part of the game. Uh, people get hurt. Some, you know, it was a freak accident. What can you do? I mean, it sucks for him, but I think he's going to be just fine. He'll come back next year and see what he is and see what he can still do and um, very Patriot style, a uh, next man up. <laughs> You know, like who else is like 
there's other people, there's other top athletes out there that are going to be fighting just as hard to try to dethrone Justin. And, you know, you've got Roman there and you've got some other new names um, that have now finally qualified for the first time for semifinals that could make some noise. And you have some other people that have made some noise in the past, but are really primed to have a great year this year. I mean, look at uh, Jack Farlow. And take a look at, um, I mean, I think Fikowski is he in much. Or east? He's west. He's east. Okay. Oh, well, is he east? I east? think he's east. Patrick Starr. Oh, Mr. Krebs, I thought you said west. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's. I think he's east. Um, I can check that here. I'll I'll fact check for us. Thank you. Um, and the other thing is, anybody got any quick quick thoughts on who's gonna backfill that place? Like Ricky was more than likely going to qualify, right? Barring injury. Like if he had gotten there, right? Well, but, it's just Oceana, so now it's a yeah. it's a toss up. Um, who are the people there? Is it who's Roy, the guy who follows Mayhem? Oh, um, oh my Wait. gosh, Roy, Roy, hey, Roy Stun, Roy Stun, Roy Stun, yes, yeah, Roy he's Stun. team, he's team, he's going team, he's team, yeah, what? and so is Crouch, yeah. Crouch, who was another close, who was another close competitor to make it individually last year, or I think he did make it last year. And yeah, there was Baden, was... yeah, there okay. was Baden Brown. Didn't he retire? Baden Brown wait, retired, I think. Wait, is I thought that was Rick, Steffi Cohen's ex boyfriend, or is that a different Baden? No, that's Hayden Bow. Hayden Bow. Oh, that's why I always get Jesus. that mixed up. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> we off topic. <laughs> I'm, really, I'm really down an online rabbit hole here. Um, Yikes! And then uh, thoughts on Chandler doing quarterfinals with a broken hand. Uh, I mean, that, that was savage. I mean, I, I mean, obviously he said on the Buttery Bros thing he had no chance. He had like he was thinking about like taking it off. And I think his sponsors were like, no, you gotta, you gotta go for it. Which so, is savage. That's just what yes. motherfuckers do sometimes is you gotta do some G shit. And he was doing that's... some, cl- and he was doing some cleans and he heard a snap. He heard like a, a like a little click in his wrist. Yeah, the buttery bros video was wild. <sighs> yeah, that yeah. was crazy. I hope, I hope it's healing up better. So he needs some of that how... deer antler. He needs some of that deer antler spray. The Ray Lewis how many... deer antler. Yes. Oh, yes. Jesus. <laughs> How many people go to um, a get t- get a individual Oceana ticket to the game? I thought it's it three. Two? Three. I thought it was three. 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 Yes. Okay. It's three. You know what? Shit. This. I think James Newberry might make a comeback this year. Oh, James! No, go back to triathleticism. Bro, I think he might. I think he's actually he did I wouldn't really. Be sub- I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I bet you're looking at the leaderboard right now because I'm not, I, and I bet you you're like, oh, there's experience. Like, that's the weird. No, part no, I'm like, just. I, oh. I should look at the leaderboard actually. Now that you mentioned the great idea, yeah. actually, um, okay. Carlos look at the quarterfinals. What What did Hannah Hardy say? Sorry, Georgia's. Sorry, Georgia decided to step into the screen. She's going to come back. Jack Farlow's in the East. Okay. But, um, I mean, to be honest, there's some up and call uh, commerce and. Oceana, so it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, I mean Will Kearney. I don't think I've really ever heard that name too often, but he's he finished behind Ricky and Jay. But Jay and Rick, I mean Ricky's out, but Jay was going team. We'll see. We will see when everything like officially shores up for the predictions. I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So sorry, Tom. Back to your podcast. Oh, all, all good. Thank you. Uh, we actually have an official fact checker now, Hannah Hardy. So. Uh, hello, hello. Yes. I, could, I try my dang hardest. Yes, appreciate it. Um, so let's do final thoughts. So, um, Hannah, we'll go for you first. All right. Well, I mean, with me, I'm just a, I'm so excited for semifinals. It's going to be here <laughs> before we know it. Um, I like I said, like I I'm really excited <laughs> for the team, and I really hope that the um that Boz really throw skill at us to finally test us there um you know like i'm like for just like in the coolest part about crossfit is just like seeing how it progresses and seeing Mm -hmm. how just like the athletes adapt and overcome and i think until like the open quarterfinals and semifinals we can either like get it was like we know like what's probably gonna come at us but then we it's like at that point it's like all right did you do your homework and do it and that's what i love through this part of the season and then the games it's like all right like let's see if you like 
can actually do like things that you like haven't done like ever in your life so it's gonna be cool seeing how Boz continues his story in his first complete year of programming all right awesome Vic what do you got uh final thought I am excited and I think if there's something that we're going to see I've been doing a lot of research um I'm thinking there's going to be some version or variation of roaming Diane. And I would not, I would not be surprised if we used a different type of wall ball or wall balls in some of these upcoming workouts, either at the semifinals or the games. Like 40 pounders like, or 30? Thir- like- like D balls or like the ones that he has in his garage instead of like the actual like rogue, like wall ball. He might use like like a a 20 pound D ball. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's super easy. I don't know. Maybe I'm sorry. Like I've used them before and they're actually, they're actually better. They're nice. Right. They're actually better. They're actually better. So maybe there's, maybe there's something like that where they go to a different standard for that. Um, and it might be a little bit easier to go to a higher target. No. <laughs> oh. 15 feet. Let's go. Yeah. No, no, we're gonna do, no, we're gonna do 10 feet, 75 pound thruster throws. Oh, or imagine if they start doing the strong man over the um like the keg, the, go, keg over the, the keg, over the yeah. Oh, I, I could just see bad things coming yeah. out of that. Bad things. I mean, um, no, no, I, I would, I would, um, yeah. I would like to see some. I think there's gonna be some surprises coming up and i think he's just been waiting to kind of get the reins um speaking of reins maybe that could be something that gets used um in some of these uh and maybe in the and maybe in the uh, games for some of the team events as well battle ropes max reps <laughs> i want a double dutch to come out straight up though i'm ready straight I'm ready. up <laughs> Um, but yeah, other than that, I mean, I got some travel coming up. Um, excited to also get down to Misfit Summer Camp because I absolutely love uh, going down to Maine, going up to Maine. Not yeah, down. I was like going down. You mean traveling north? <laughs> yes, traveling north to Maine during the the nicer time of the year. Um, what do you mean the snow? The literally blizzard that we survived was way co- too cool. Buddy, no, I live in I'm, this. I'm, I'm okay, good. you're good. you're you're in Tornado Town. <laughs> um but yeah definitely excited for that and um we'll see maybe i'll be at the games this year maybe i won't uh i'd love to i I still i think i might still go i'm not sure we'll see. why wouldn't you i don't know i just i think it might i just make sure it lines up with my schedule that's all and i'm also hey. thinking about orlando as well but i don't know if i'm gonna go there either Works he might crazy. not he might not go because insulin yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, Xander. Pancreas. What... Just yell pancreas. Yeah, pancreas. Yeah. So, Xander, um, Xander what do you got? Um, I'm Peter super acidosis. stoked. Uh, oh, gosh. Like, <laughs> never had that. Never had that. So Pythagorean theorem. Now we're just throwing out terms. It's like Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, <laughs> it's a uh... – so I'm ethics. excited. Yeah. Uh, business synergies. <laughs> Um, I'm super excited for Misfit Summer Camp, June 23rd to the 25th. Um, and so excited to spend some extra time since one of my good buddies, Ryan's moving up there too in the next couple weeks. Um, but more excited about just seeing semis and like going back to that old regionals vibe of mm-hmm. everybody's got the same workouts and see how people adjust week to week and kind of the difference between, okay, so what do we see the East athletes do versus the West versus, cause I think it's east west and then there's one more weekend or is it just two weekends this year that's the only thing i think it's three three thank you um fact checked um and so (laughs) i really want you to be right (laughs) i don't Um, know i should know it right i'm i'm doing the thing your fact check george is really not letting you fact check anything oh no um but yeah that's really like it and super excited just to start training for a marathon and start trying to do more different fitness and honestly just enjoying archery right now so that's pretty fun why right. did, why did you start archery if you don't mind me asking uh, um i realized i was i needed something to just mentally to try to like 
do something else that wasn't reading a book or like watching YouTube videos or something like that. So it gets me outside, practice 50, 60 shots a day, like on my lunch, like when I'm working from home. And then like in between, like over the weekend, like I would like did strength session, Metcon. And then I was like, okay, let me go shoot. And then went back to working out. Like it's still outdoors. It's fun. Um, just it's very much more mental than it is a physical thing. So I have, I have a question to follow See. up on that there. Uh, before you shoot this bow, do you ever whisper the words you have failed this city and then try? <laughs> um, I don't think Oliver Queen would allow me to do that. Um, and I believe if I went like f through Father Queen, like what, like because season one, what is it? He kills everybody. Season two, he doesn't kill anybody. It's all just great Arrowverse kind of things. And the guy who plays the Flash in the Arrowverse is three thousand times better than Ezra Miller. So oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So real inside baseball nerd comic book stuff there. <laughs> all right. Well, I have uh, my final <laughs> thoughts. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I'm 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 a little disappointed in somebody in this chat. So, Vic, why did you go on someone else's podcast, man? Oh, I've been, not all not mean? all black not all black and white. I've I done saw, that before. Oh, you I've have done that twice. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I went all on. Right. I went on with Hayes and Kenya. Kenya is a good friend of mine. Yeah. Do you know this is like the main one you're supposed to be on all the time, and that's it? Like you can't go to any other ones. You're getting <laughs> savant so hard right now. <laughs> Yeah, you know you're <laughs> under a contract. Yes, you're under contract. Get free shirts again. Yes, yes, no free shirts, no more. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I, it was cool to see, like you know, obviously you doing another podcast, which was pretty cool. Um, I didn't see the full full episode. I, it's long. Yeah, it's I, like I, it's I, like two different podcasts. Oh God, like it, like over under. It's three like about three hours. Half. It's oh, like three whoa. hours. It's like a Joe Rogan that's, episode. That's that's a that's a very like that's aggressive. Who spoke the most? I think it was a good combination of all of us. Okay. And yeah, there, was, there was four people in that whole chat. So. It was it was three, and then it, it it was three at the beginning. One logged off, became three, stayed three, and then became four. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, it was all over the place. It it got it it um it it got a it got it got fun. It was very uh very random. We talked more about. We didn't really talk too much about CrossFit. We tried not to. Um, good. <laughs> well, um, yeah, like I said, it's it's pretty cool seeing like other people in, in the chat, like on other podcasts. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to you know semifinals and see you know what the programs are before the semifinals come out. Uh, before the you know semifinals actually start, and then uh, yeah, kind of go from there. So thank you guys for joining the show i appreciate it and uh hope you guys have a great night peace See ya. Bye. all right